Hi, this is Sandeep Bharti and we are here at Spendaker Summit in San Diego. And today we have with us Gopal Dometi, your founder and CEO of Opsmax. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show. So this is the first day of the conference and you have also delivered a keynote. Tell us a bit about what were the core highlights of your keynote today. My keynote is about how can Spinnaker become ubiquitous. Spinnaker uh, for the last four years has picked up momentum, uh, has now almost 10,000 people community. And so I'm taking this step today to project and saying, okay, how can we be a 50,000 people community? How can we be, uh, you know, 20, 30,000 companies adopting Spinnaker? So um, then I said, I've, um, in the keynote, I compared, I analyzed the internet growth. What, what fueled internet to go from 40 million users to 15, 20 billion users today or devices today. And even Spinnaker is today almost at a 30 to 40 million deployments a year and then projecting that it could go to 200 billion deployments a year. And what are the things we need to do uh, to get to that point? That was, that's what my keynote is about. And what, we, what I said is that the Spinnaker platform has to be scalable, has to be, be simple, and also safe. And once you do those three things, then you get to a critical mass of adoption. I will come to the point of, first of all, uh, this growth of adoption of Kubernetes. Later, but before that, I'm actually curious why and when you created the company, what opportunities or problem you saw in the market that you wanted to solve? Three years ago, um, I met uh, uh, Adrian Cockcroft. I and Adrian were talking about a lot of different things. And one of the things uh, we both had, uh, Adrian is actually a net ex Netflix uh, chief architect. And one of the things that I was very fascinated about is uh, how do you deliver software? Um, and at that time, Spinnaker was just being open sourced. Um, when it was being open sourced, I saw the potential of Spinnaker. But what was very interesting to me is if you want to continuously deliver software, you also need to continuously verify software. And so I saw Spinnaker and I said, okay, if you if we if we if we augment Spinnaker with a continuous verification using machine learning, then you can achieve that vision of dream of uh, completely automating software delivery, and that I knew was a big opportunity, uh, especially because I understood that there are fifteen billion devices out there, and they all need to get updated. Um, and the other portion is that Kubernetes was just picking, uh, gaining momentum. And if Kubernetes is declarative infrastructure, you need a declarative application delivery. And so those two trends told me that this is going to be something big. And that's how we started uh, Opsimax. Right. And how involved are you with the Kubernetes or uh, Spinnaker? Uh, today, these days, we cannot even separate the two. So, <laughs> uh, uh, how involved are you with the Spinnaker community? Yeah, so OpsMX is very involved with the Spinnaker community. Um, and uh, we are a big part of the community. Um, we have uh, uh, 19 contributors into the Spinnaker community. To give you, put that into context, we are the third largest uh, in contributors in number, or only after Google and Netflix. Um, and we have made over 600 contributions. We have one of the early Netflix uh, um, Spinnaker team members join us, Michael Graf. He's also uh, one of the SIG uh, special interest groups. Um, uh, he, he, he leads that group. So we are uh, not just that, we have open sourced several of uh, um, um, several of the components. One is Terraform. We have basically open sourced uh, a Terraform stage. We also have Spinnaker working on Red Hat RHEL. So essentially it's a certified Spinnaker that we also open source. So 
apart from the contributions, the the open source um, um, open sourcing several dip, uh, bigger modules, we provide Slack support. That means in the Spinnaker Slack channel, we our our team goes and participates in helping potential users of cust, uh, Spinnaker get onboarded. So th these are the three things that we do, and the overall community leadership um, we participate in. Right. So we're fairly involved with the Spinnaker community. Right. Is Spinnaker involved, you know, at Netflix to solve their own problem, but now it's used widely. Uh, typically, what happens with open source projects, you know, you either build or you can buy. But uh, you come in a place where you enable customers to, you know, use it without having to invest their own, you know, developer resources. Because not everybody can afford it. Correct. So, so there are a couple of things I want to understand from you. First of all, is that. Uh, how, how do you take a Spinnaker and add value to it without creating a kind of, you know, take it too far from the upstream? Okay. What value you add and why customers, you know, should work with you instead of taking the... To simplify it, why buy versus build? That's the question. Yeah. So, a very good question. Um, Opsimax as a philosophy believe that the open source should be open source completely. So, and we put a layer, we put a layer of our modular services on top of open source. So, so the way we are, we have uh, architected our product is that it will have the op latest open source distribution and have our secret sauce sort of on, on top of it. Um, um, so uh, that secret sauce is what we monetize, but we also sell open source support. The reason customers uh, come to us is either because they would like the open source support. So since we have uh, the expertise in Spinnaker and typically a customer would take, let's say, three months to onboard an applica onboard uh, applications into production, we can do it in like two days um, versus uh, when customer wants to go into production with, with uh, Spinnaker, um, they would like a partner like us who gives 24 by 7 support so that anything uh, goes wrong in production, they can basically call us, which is, uh, which is a very high risk for any large company to take if they don't have somebody like us. Now, typically they, they first get onboarding support from us, they get they, they buy open source support from us, and then they start, once they see the value, they start buying the, the, the value added layer on top. And that value added layer, I can talk about it, but that's the, sort of the reason why customers buy from us versus do it themselves because it's it's not always easy and we bring best practices we have an understanding of let's say any finance industry we have an understanding of regulation how they should be able to do it we have an understanding of what kind of app how to take a certain kind of monolith application deploy into production with using spinnaker which they have to go through the learning process themselves which you know takes time and and also causes errors and any errors can be basically fatal and if you look at any open source product, all the way from Linux kernel to whatever it is, uh, you don't just use that open source. You have to integrate it with your services. You know, sometimes it could be compliance. Some kind, sometimes it could be your billing system. You know, so Correct. so uh, and the open source project will not cater to those needs. You do have to work with somebody. Correct. So, yes. Yeah, so it, that makes uh, that layer makes perfect sense. Uh, I mean, you make. I mean, of course, open source is always usable, but you just make it. You know, totally. Yeah, we, we make we, we, problems. We, yeah, know. yeah, we we make it production ready. We right. make it enterprise Excel. scale. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So I know you may not be able to name all the customers, but can you just give us an example? Of what kind of customers are using your solutions? Yeah. So uh, we have customers uh, first all across the geography. I think other than Africa. Uh, so we have from Europe, from 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 North America, Asia, actually Latin, uh, South America, all of the above. We have pretty much across most sectors. Like we have large financials, we have high tech, we have fintech, we have telcos, 
we have we have across um, um, the at least these sectors. Which also means these sectors. So we also using, have government. Which also means these sectors are using spinnaker. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to just go back to uh, the the evolution of spinnaker itself. You know, uh, we, we touched upon it just very briefly. It started at Netflix, and then now it has evolved into a project which is hosted at you know a neutral foundation, and now everybody is kind of and you guys want everybody to use it. I am curious about the evolution of spinnaker itself from where it started. and how it's like adding more layer as more as more users come in you have to solve more problems so can you talk about that a bit yes um so you know i remember three and a half years ago going to netflix and meeting the the team there and i was thinking wow this is pretty cool um and and you know the, the spinnaker has come a long way since then um uh, in fact i think at that time there was not even kubernetes support so uh so um the the if you think about spinnaker it it has gone through the maturity cycle beyond netflix in the last 3 years uh it has gone through um because lot of finance companies lot of high tech companies they're all using it and they're giving that feedback into the into the system um so uh for example its scalability has increased and ability to deploy and use has significantly improved and also now we have uh, the safety which is the kayanta the the canary analysis all of that was originally not not in the open source that was open source it was recently only um uh, uh, yeah it's recently only came into the into the open source community yeah. so but uh, when when we talk about spinnaker and kubernetes these are very complicated technology these are not the easiest one to use you it's know it's easy i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so so as you add more layers it makes it even more complex but then also at the same time kubernetes is not meant for average you know it's an orchestration platform and it's nigger ci cd so but but then you would not want it to be easy because then that's your job you know you make it easier for you but do you also when you look at as core part of the kubernetes uh, sorry i always keep saying kubernetes <laughs> because you are right behind you is the venue for kubecon <laughs> <laughs> that's okay so, yeah so when you look at spinnaker uh, what are the major concerns of the community that as you are adding this layer as new users are coming in it is becoming more complex do you care about it do you want to keep it simple do you want it do you worry about that is losing focus or not or to just sum it up all what are your major concerns about uh, as spinnaker is evolving i think see any at, i've been involved in um, you know communities before i think any community has to go through that cycle of scaling wherein you get a lot of features in these various dimensions right um and because that scaling is really coming through different customer requirements right um and typically what happens is that that scaling will hit will actually get you to grow to a certain customer size at that time the new customers will come and say i want simple not in terms of simple in terms of community uh, organization etc or uh, in a simple in terms of code base but simple in terms of usability and that will give you the next sort of uh, a quantum of growth right so we i mean our goal is to make that make sure that one this scalability happens to hit a certain uh, target sort of number of customers and then the next goal would be to also further simplify the the usability um and make it grow uh, much further i mean to to give you an example um you know when when an organization uh, starts using spinnaker they uh, the developers need initially the couple of the developers can do onboarding themselves but they really would need self service onboarding so that nobody else has to onboard them right um we are also there also a concept of intent based pipelining so you say the intent and it sort of get, creates the it creates a pipeline right um so 
uh, this cycle of expansionary or scaling where a lot of requirements come in is a necessary part of the evolution of any open source sort of project. And I don't think, I mean, I think we are excited uh, that it's happening. And it also keeps you guys on your toes, you know, it, the, the, the more challenges come in and that's how open source people like to solve it. The more challenges are there. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if there's no challenge, there's no fun. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, it's, it's like human life, right? You, you don't have anything to push. Your muscle goes away. Right. So no, the, the beauty of open source versus a property company is that you have only those set of engineers, you know, who can solve those problems. So you don't want new challenges. You want to maintain their user base. With open source, new challenges, new people can come in, you know, new communities, you know, will evolve. Uh, and people join from all around the globe. And I mean, nothing yes. can beat that. No, absolutely, absolutely. And we have a large office in India. We have some fabulous uh, people uh, contributing to, to open source uh, from our India office. Uh, and it's a very vibrant community. And that's the, that's the beauty of, of open source. And that's why we built the company on Spinnaker and then we add a layer on top of Spinnaker so that our, our customers can have the best of both worlds. I, before we wrap up, I, since you know you'll be at KubeCon also, I'm curious about. There's a lot of your customers. Uh, maybe uh, they're in different phases of their cloud native journey. Some are using Kubernetes and considering uh, Spinnaker. Some are using Spinnaker but considering Kubernetes. So how do you see the as these two technologies, you know, working you know closely to solve your customers' problem? Where do you come in? How do you help those customers? And how do you see these two technologies working together? That's a beautiful, beautiful question. Um, typically, when the day two of Kubernetes, that means you went just production to Kubernetes, is when they're really thinking, hey, how am I going to do continuous delivery onto it? Right? Sometimes what they do is they, they extend whatever tool they have to do one or two applications on Kubernetes. And then they say, okay, I'm not too happy with it, so let me go and look for the modern continuous delivery platform. So there is that the moment. So when to get the power of Kubernetes realized, you actually need a modern continuous delivery uh, tool. Um, otherwise, you have a great car, but you don't know how to sort of drive it. Um, uh, so so uh, like a lot of our customers who use OpenShift, which is uh, you know obviously built on Kubernetes. Um, our sweet spot is day two of OpenShift will be where they call us. Um, on the other uh, uh, um, dimension, when you start, you're using um, Spinnaker to deploy into AWS, etc. Then um, it's very natural for some developer to say, I want to use this Kubernetes flavor, and then you can sort of to deploy it. So, so it kind of works both ways, but we are obviously more interested in when this, the Kubernetes gets to day two and we get called to, to you know, give our product to them. Right. It's, it, they they complement each other. They're becoming... Absolutely. Very, yeah. I mean, they, they complement each other. They don't... Kubernetes and Spinnaker doesn't yeah. compete. Yeah. Just in the early days of servers, you know, we used to talk about lap stack, you know. So that's what it is becoming today also. Spinnaker, Kubernetes, Linux, and all those technologies. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's basically a different parts of the stack. And, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, Gopal, uh, thanks uh, very much for you know, taking your time and talking to us today. Uh, I'll be seeing you again at <laughs> KubeCon also. Yes. And I look forward to seeing you again to see where Spinnaker is going in the next Spinnaker Summit. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you again.